G'day everybody and welcome to the round 14 review for AFL Fantasy in 2016. Uh, today we'll start with the bottom scorer, so there's not much that needs to be said to figure out who that is. So Scott, take it away for us once again. Are you ever going to change up the intro, Andy? Well, I don't have seem, to. You just seem I don't to have say to, the same Scott. thing every, if you keep, every week. If you score above me one week, then it might change. <laughs> All right, well, we'll, I hope you we'll do. do it this week. We'll do it this week. Um, so, starting off in my back line, it's a great place to start, like normal. Uh, 340s in there. So, Heath Shaw with 42, Bartel with 45, and Joyce with 46. So, I can't really complain about Joyce, but I can complain about the other two, and I definitely will. Uh, Bartel, I don't know what Chris Scott was thinking, but he was on some drugs that morning, that night or whatever. I don't know what was going on. He was playing Bartel at half forward for half the game. Yeah. And so, oh, I don't even know what was going on there. And then with Heath Shaw, he got a tag, a defensive tag, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in, the, in the, this game of football. That is just ridiculous. And it is so stupid. I don't understand what was going on there. Well, but, he has he has helped them win a couple of games this year. Well, yeah, but still, you don't. He did a good job. He from forty disposals he's had well, once now twelve. I think what I've been saying is that he he can get tagged if his opponent kicks a couple of goals on him because then he has to man up rather than leaving his opponent. So that's how you stop a defend the defensive player playing brilliantly like he sure does. Yeah, I can see what you're saying. Anyway, uh, I brought in Laird last week and put the VC on him, and that was a disappointing output from him. But I brought him in for the long run. Um, actually, I remember the last time I said that about a player. Uh, that was Johannesson, and he there got injured go. the next week. So uh, we won't say anything more about that. Um, and then in, in the midfield, it doesn't look too snazzy in there. Uh, the big orange thing is on Rockcliffe for this week. Uh, it was a good thing I didn't put on Heath Shaw. That would have ended really badly. Uh, so he got 101. That was all right. He had a good last half to get it up there. Dangerfield and Pendlebury were poor. Lewis and especially Albert just doing the same old, same old. Four 120s in a row is brilliant from him. And I don't expect anything less from now on. Connor Blakely... Yeah, that was disappointing, but what do you expect from a rookie? Reese Matheson finally showed what he was worth, and that was the score I was waiting for. Big old 96 from him, which was absolutely brilliant. And also, while we're at the 96s, Josh Smith back in my defense doing that too. Then in my rocks, Stefan Martin, nice to see him back in some form. 200s in the past two weeks, still has only got three in the whole season. So seems how good form he's in now that Trent West is out. Obviously, I had to play Mason Cox on the field this week because Carey has re-injured himself. So that's no good. And then in my forward, Barlow was very good. Montagna had 46 at quarter time. So trying to get to 98 was a disappointment. And then my two Carlton boys were just not on their game that day, it seems. So, just quickly a couple things. Um, Heath Shaw was my lowest score for this week. That's how that's, not that's how bad it was. No, that is horrible. Number two, uh, obviously most of you might know that Barlow is now out for three to four weeks. So, he won't be staying in many sides from here on, I guess. So, we'll have to look to trade him out. And then Curry, like I said before, he's re-injured his finger and he's out for an extra five to six weeks. So you're going to have to stick with him on your pine or just cash him in now. But anyway, we'll move up to my score for the week. 1585, which Gee. sounds pretty bad. But in the round How many players it, did you have? I had 19. 19 so. players for 1585. Well, I had 440, so calm your farm there, mate. Um, but I still managed to go up 1,200 ranks to be just outside the top 13,000, which is very nice. There you go. Yep. 
All right. Um, we'll hop, skip, and a jump to my team then. So, what do we have here? We had Shaw's 42. and So, I only had two players playing, <laughs> and they were, those were oh two 40s. God. So, my combined <laughs> score from a whole defense this week was 87. So, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, two premiums. So, Tom Lee didn't get up, which is very disappointing because they were mm. saying that he'd be back. Um, so, fingers crossed he's back this week for me. Uh, hopping into the midfield, um, you know, Selwood, normal. Stephen, not very good. Lewis, really good. Montagna brought him, a little bit disappointing. But there's one player sitting there. Oh, at no. uh, M7, his name's no. Connor Menichu, 103 points. Connor Menichu turned up on the weekend, looked absolutely incredible. I'm probably the only person in Australia that still has him. And boy, oh boy, I put him on my field this week. 103 points, Scott. What are you, what are you going to say to that? I say that he's bullshit. <laughs> um... And he'll never score half of that again in his life. <laughs> That's like so his last three scores combined. He can go stick it up his whatever hole he wants to, whether it's his nostril, his ears, or whatever. And, uh, well, we'll move on with our lives, Andy. I won't. I'm going to stick with that. And he's going to be my captain next week. So, <laughs> um, I had Pops to out play. 13. Oh, uh, yeah, hopefully not. Um, I had to play Mason Cox. Um, got me a 60. That was all right. And then in the forward line... Zorko was out with uh, personal reasons, which really hurt me. Um, yeah, so that definitely wasn't good. Oh, that got me down really. to only 18 players this week. Um, no. What was that? Didn't hurt you. Well, it did. My, my score well, wasn't great. It was yeah, better McCarthy than you. You on your great. bench. Yeah, yeah, you, Mac- yeah, he scored 85. Yeah, McCarthy. I, I'm getting there, Scott. All right, you've had your time. <laughs> so, obviously, it's disappointing that Barlow's injured. Um, Carriage not scoring what he should be doing. Dugowie had a 40-point quarter. I, I know that Dugowie is going to get 120 one day this season, but uh, not this week. Davis, 59, and then Phillips and McCarthy both standing up and going crazy with their points. And if we scroll up, my overall score was 16-16. Wasn't great, but it moved me up 80 ranks to 2,600 overall. So uh, I'm in a good stead to finish off the buy rounds and then push even further from there. Sounds good. It does. So let's so, hop into some trades now, Scott. Yep. So we'll hop back over to my team. So we have a problem with my midfield this week. As, at it, as it seems at the moment, I only have four... <laughs> What was that, Andy? I laughed. Am I allowed why'd to you, do that? Why'd you laugh? Well, I just saw how many blue dots there are. It's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, it is. Four playing players at the moment. So I'm going to... I think it's time for Jensen to go. He's still making a bit of money, but one of my round 15 rookies has to go to create some money. I so, reckon Blakely. Why well, not? I reckon you... Why? He's well, worth how much? 370 Yeah, well... I thought about it. I thought originally I was going to get rid of Blakely, but I thought I, if I can trade out someone else and keep some money, then I would prefer to have Blakely still sitting in my team than Jansen later on. Okay. So, so I, ha- I have to play either Blakely or Mills or Matheson on my field when it comes to round 16, and I would prefer it to be Blakely at this stage. He's right. the one most capable of scoring. Fair dinkum. So, anyway, I'm going to move Jansen to my defence by putting Smith in my midfield. And I'll be downgrading him to Nathan Broad. So, fingers crossed he's playing again. Um, and then I'll be upgrading Ryan Harwood up to Sam Doherty. And I'll have $3,000 left in the bank for next week's trades. Very good. <clears throat> so, move over to your trades then, Andy. Well, you know what, Scott? I've got three. Okay, I'm going to have to remember these on the top of my head. Well, you can only have two. I've got three combinations that I'm looking at this week, and I'm going to do something I thought I'd never do before, which is ask you for advice, Scott. Um, mm. So this is 
So two players are leaving my team. Barlow, who's injured, and Marcus Adams, who's probably reached his peak price. Now, I'm looking at, like I said, three different combinations. The first being Jasper Pittard, Seb Ross. Okay, so mm-hmm. all three of these leave me with one one to five K left. So them them who I can afford. Pittard, who's having a good year, Seb Ross. Or I could go Rory Laird and Josh Kennedy from the West Coast team. Mm-hmm. Or Andrew Gaff. Guess how expensive Andrew Gaff is without checking? He's like four seventeen K yeah. easy. Ridiculous. Yeah. Or I could go Gaff and Doherty. Oh, whew. Yeah. So I've been oh. tied on these three for a long time and I don't know what to do. Yeah. Um. I'll come in on the first one then. Pittard. Um, probably the only good player in the port side this year. Probably. Um, <laughs> so... I don't mind the sound of him because he's quite unique. Not many people have him, and yeah, he's been 4%. scoring. Yeah, he's been scoring quite well in the last couple of weeks. I think it was high nineties average in the last three. Uh, Seb Ross, obviously, um, he's probably your best option from what you can afford by getting Pittard. Um, but he, while he's been scoring well, I'm not completely sold on him. The second yeah. option. Oh, yep. Carry on. There's a couple of question marks around Seb Ross. He's not a proven premium, but he is scoring mm. pretty well at the moment. Yeah. Uh, with the second option, uh, Rory Laird, I like him. Obviously, I brought him in last week, so I must have a bit of uh, heart there for him. And then, what's his name? Josh Kennedy from the West Coast Eagles. Obviously, they have, they're going to have a very good buy. Uh, not buy, sorry. Um Fixture, there's the word. That's what I was looking for. Uh, They've got a very good fixture coming up with some easy teams, a couple easy teams in a row. So he could get. So he's got. So it starts off with Essendon at home, right after he's had a rest in his bye. He could go 180, Mm. and he could be my vice captain. So imagine that um, security. After that, he's got North Melbourne, which is the hard match, Um, and then after that, he's got about five to six weeks of easy games. So. Yep. Yeah, that's the reason why I traded him in Elite. Mm. Traded him in, in Elite. So, there's that. And then your last mm. option, which I, I think this might be the worst one out of all of them. The Gaff uh, and Doherty. Yeah, Gaff. Um, I've never really held him that high, He had five hundreds in the first seven games, remember? Yeah, well, you dropped him to free agency in Elite. So, there was something cl- clearly wrong with those hundreds. Um, it's because he got knocked out. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know about him. I'm not totally convinced about his scoring potential. But then obviously Doherty, he's a he's a gun at the moment, and that's why I'm bringing him in this week. So I reckon I personally like the second one the best because you're bringing in a, a gun defender who's proven himself and a forward who's proven himself over this year and quite a bit of last year as well. So if it was me, I'd be going with that one. Can you bring in a player knowing that in one or two weeks' time, being North Melbourne next week, that they'll probably score badly? I just can't get over that, knowing that you know next week he's going to be on uh, probably Robbie Tarrant, who's probably going to hold him to 60 points. It's just something about that. Just I know that he could go big this week and the week after that. but Well, if he gets 150 this week and 60 to the next, well, then the 150 makes up for the 60, does it not? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But he, who knows? West Coast might smash the crap out of North Melbourne and he could score 70 or 80 or even 90. So mm. we'll see what happens. We will see. All right. Uh, I'd also like to hear what you guys have to think about those three trades as well. Pick your favorite one. Let me know in the comments. So without further ado, we'll wrap it up there. So thank you guys for joining us for the round 14 review. Hopefully you guys have a really good scoring week this round. And we'll see you guys next week. Take care. Take care, guys.